<laughs> so I met Dr. Rock. So this is the only picture I took. This guy was so gross. He was very like... The, the reason I took a picture with this guy is because he had the whole... He went the whole nine yards. He sounded exactly like Dr. Roxo. And he was all weird and clammy. And it was like the real Dr. Roxo was standing there. And the thing is, when I first went up to him, I was like, dude, that's really funny, man. Can I, can I take a picture with you? And then he's just like, anything for a fan. And I was like, oh, shit, he's got the whole thing down. It was hilarious. That guy was really funny. That's the only, you know, it's the grossest part of this shit. This, what is his badge? What is his badge attached to? Right there? What is his badge? The lanyard to his badge. What is it attached to? Right? I didn't realize that at the time. It's like, man, you have to go back and watch the movie again to realize that you can see flashes of Brad Pitt in the beginning. What the fuck? Anyway. The thing is that regardless of how cool it was, by the time Monday came, I was like really homesick. Like I was ready to just be playing Demon Souls and talking shit to the chat room for being not funny, right? Like when Monday came along and everyone had left, I was like, dude, I gotta get home. Oh man, my fucking flight back was so fucking shitty, I don't even want to talk about it. But let me just tell you, the pilot for my goddamn plane might as well have been Amelia Earhart because we were doing all kinds of Tokyo drifting on the way back and I swear I almost fucking barfed. It was so crazy. I was looking, when we were landing, there was like, dude, California has had the craziest fucking drought for like the longest time and we have to get pouring rainstorms the the fucking one night that i'm flying in from detroit pouring rainstorms we're in like a severe drought here ah oh ruin thanks very much oh ruin you know you really know how to turn a frown upside down there or ruin because let me tell you california is in such a shitty situation right now lord chat room that they have signs up that say gold is the new green you know what that means they don't water the fucking plants anymore anywhere. All the trees are dying. All the grass that's owned by the city is dying because they don't water it. So the towns are starting to look like wastelands, right? We're talking wastelands. And the one fucking night I'm flying in, I like rarely fly. The one night I'm flying in, there's a hurricane, Hurricane Eris. And fucking the pilot was like, I don't even give a shit about the, the hurricane. Let me just fucking Tokyo drift my way into the landing zone or whatever it's called. I almost shit my pants. Anyway, I'm alive. I made it. I don't like flying. Uh, I mean, I don't normally even give a shit. I normally don't even give a shit, right? It's like, I don't like it, but it's never like scary like that. There was 15 minutes of this shit just being like... The only thing I, I used as like a coping mechanism for this like panic attack I was having was I would look over at the, hey, golden fatty, give him the hot dogs, will ya? I'm in the middle of a thought. Thanks so much, golden fatty. Muchos Garcias. Nice to see you, man. It's like I haven't, I haven't been in the chat room in forever. Anyway, fuck the flight. Let's talk about the good shit, right? <sighs> man, that flight was terrible. The food was really good. The food, the average quality of food in Detroit, definitely su substantially higher. The quality of food, just in general, all food, even junk food, was just like substantially better. Uh, you know, there was a lot of, I was really, really kind of surprised at the, the usage of the N-word there is crazy. Through the roof, they don't even like N-words are just like all day long. Red light, green light, you push the button for the walk sign. When you push that button, it says the N-word. It's like everything's N-word city over there, you know? And it's, I could imagine if you lived there, it would be hard to not pick that up, right? How could you, like, I mean, anyway, it was very, uh, you know, it was cool though. Everyone was super funny. Everyone's funny. In Detroit, everyone has a good sense of humor. Like, like, just the random strangers have a good sense of humor. You can like crack a joke with someone and they'll always be like sharp. They'll be like, you know, they'll have something for you. You know what I mean? Like everyone's just got a really good attitude. And like uh, the, the architecture of the, the city and, you know, just, just the streets in general is really cool. Like historic. 
when you're standing there in the streets of Detroit, downtown Detroit, and you're looking around, it feels like you're looking at exactly what it looked like, like, a hundred years ago or some shit. Even more than a hundred years ago. Like, the way the manhole covers, the steam comes out of the manhole covers, like in the Ninja Turtles, and like... Just the architecture of these buildings and, you know, the way they do construction on these buildings, too. Like, it's just like in Home Alone 2, you know, in Home Alone 2. Anyway, the point is it was really cool. It was really cool to be there in, uh, in, in, in Detroit. How was the transit system? You know, I don't know because I'll get to the Yumicon aspect of this, but the fucking tournament was so hospitable so hot. i'll get to that i'll get to that i didn't have to worry about a taxi i didn't have to worry about anything because uh cora contu like treated us like sultans i mean we had drivers there was a fucking guy there was a driver there in a chrysler c300 when my plane landed holding a thing that had my name on it that shit said eris i'm your driver sir let me take your bag i was like no man no, this is my fucking bag. You can't take my bag. He was like, all right, that's cool. Here's my car. I was like, I was like, what do you mean take my bag? Dude, it was crazy. Anyway, they treated us like fucking sultans over there. I'll get to that shit later. I'll get to that shit later, okay? Detroit. Let's stick to Detroit for now. So there are there there is this like um like this historic hot dog place right near where i was staying right near where i was staying right there's this historic hot dog place called american coney island right and so i i I heard about the lore of this hot dog place right so i had to check it out i went i talked to some people there i learned the lore of this place so i'm going to tell it to you now so there's this place called american coney island it's in downtown detroit and apparently hey gefalker thanks very much gefalker internet since this is a hot dog store, you got to give them some extras. Thanks very much. Four years is no joke. But shh, I'm trying to tell a story. So there's these two brothers, right? And they opened this hot dog stand. This is like 100 years ago or some shit. Like when they had first invented hot dogs in Detroit, they had invented the idea of a chili dog, right? These two brothers were like, let's open up a chili dog place. So they opened this place called American Coney Island hot dogs or some shit whatever it's called anyway it becomes an instant hit everyone's up in arms it's like this is the shit chili and cheese on a hot dog this is the dopest idea ever it's brilliant it's brilliant millionaires instantly so everything is going cool and then one day these brothers get in an argument you know sibling rivalry right so they get in an argument and one of the brothers goes you know what Fuck you. I'm going to go and open my own hot dog stand and I'm going to open it right next door around the corner where fudge is made and I'm going to put your dumb ass out of business. Fuck you. So he went and did that and they called it Lafayette Coney Island hot dogs right next door. Right. And I don't mean right next door like there's any space between them. I'm talking, you could hang a Mona Lisa with the eyes cut out and fucking look through that shit and see what's going on in the next hot dog place. So there's two hot dog places rivaling. So allegedly, this is the American side of the story, right? Because I didn't end up going to the Lafayette side. I didn't have the time. According to the American side, he says that a few years ago, that brother, the, the shithead one, the one that was like, fuck you, that brother, he went esports and he sold the whole business and they changed the recipe. But the American one, it's still the original owner, original recipe. They never went esports, you know? So I don't know if that's true because there's always two sides to a story. But in the end, the chili dog was fucking good. You know what I did that first day? I went to the chili dog place. I ate my chili dog and chili cheese fries. And then I thought to myself, you know what? They got a bunch of commentary I got to do tomorrow. And I might get hungry. Give me four more chili dogs. So that next day, I had like locked and loaded. I had a clip of chili dogs locked and loaded in my chili dog cannon. Boom! Between every single fucking break I had between commentary, went upstairs, ate a fucking chili dog. I'm telling you, this trip was magical. <laughs> And that's not even talking about the Yumacon side of things, right? 
the Yumicon side of things was totally like awesome as well. Like I said, Cora Kantu, I mean, she hooked it up like crazy. Like I walked through the I walked this is like okay, so let's let's keep it real, right? If we compare this shit to, you know, Lord Valle. Come on, man. I had a driver in a Chrysler C300 that wanted to take my bags and he wasn't stealing them. He was taking them just because he wants to hold them and do things for me because I'm sick. He gave me like mints and like water in the car. He wouldn't let me sit next to him. I said, hey man, can I sit next to you? He's like, no man, you gotta sit in the back seat. You don't know what the fuck you're doing, do you? <laughs> I was like, no man, tell me how it works. Anyway, uh, it was crazy. They were so hospitable. I mean, it was like, I can't even explain it. And then for the staff, they had like a 24 hour snack room and there was like a fridge with like all kinds of beverages and shit, unlimited ammo. I mean, unlimited ammo. They had like this, you know, they had this soda there called Fago. I've never heard of it, right? But it's real popular, Fago, right? I don't know why we don't have it here in California. So crates, bagoosh, a quarter of a century? Holy mackerel, thanks so much, man. I really appreciate that. Lord chat room, Lord hot dogs. So let me tell you about Fago. I suspect that we don't have it here because, I mean, in California, we probably have one too many Fagos to, for that to slide, you know? I think they'd take offense. But they have it there. And the cool thing about it is that it is weird. Like they have a million flavors, weird flavors. It's like Jelly Bellies. It's not like... You know, we have like the fake stuff like Mountain Sage is like Mountain Dew. It's like the off-brand select stuff. Well, the thing is, they have a million flavors that they don't have like red flavor explosion or like sour black cherry or like whatever. They have all these flavors. Anyway, it's really good. They had a refrigerator full of like every flavor in the book, you know. Uh, and overall, the Yumacon side of things, it was really like, first of all, for me, it was really, husp they were really hospitable. Everyone was friendly. You know, we had like all these really nice things that were like uh, done for us because we were staff, you know, really, really nice. The tournament itself was very peculiar, right? Because I had just been to SoCal Regionals and to me, SoCal Regionals was like really catered to the stream. And the person, the people that were there, I mean, Street Fighter V was there, Tekken 7 was there, but overall, it was kind of like low profile, right? This tournament was the other way around. This tournament, the stream was cool and everything, but it was definitely catered towards the person there. There was a 24-hour game room. It was awesome. There was a million arcades there. Third Strike, back-to-back -back Japanese, CVS2 back-to-back -back Japanese cabs, Virtuon 1 and 2, all the Time Crisis shit. There was, I mean, it was crazy. 24 hours, all free play, right? In that room, in the front of it, they had four main stages, right? Four main stages. Maybe there was even five, right? And each game was treated equally. So if you entered CVS2, you got to play on a stage that was the same size as the one that they played Street Fighter 4 on, right? So it was really cool the way they showed a lot of respect to each game. Each game had commentators flown out, like... Like, that guy D1 was on my flight. I talked to that guy, you know? I mean, it was just really cool. It was just really cool the way they treated the game room in terms of an attendee. Now, in terms of the stream itself, you know, it was, it was nice that they got such, like, talented people there. But the thing is, like, it just seemed like it was not catered towards them. The, the internet went down and, like, whatever. It didn't even matter. Like, the cool thing was that the people that were there were just, like, out of control. Plus, the Michigan crowd... They're like beastly. They're like the funnest crowd ever. I was watching part of this Marvel exhibition thing they had, and I don't even, I wasn't even watching the Marvel. I was just watching the crowd. They were just shooting N words into the sky like it was nothing. Insults. The crowd was just the coolest crowd ever. Detroit has a really, really cool scene. Really funny. <laughs> Lots of shit talk. Lots of shit talk. Who the fuck just rang my doorbell? Hold on a second, Lord Chat Room.
Jesus Christ, dude. Security at the compound here is fucking so shitty. This is a gated community, right? So we're supposed to be able to keep out these scrubby-ass door-to-door salesmen. First of all, how the fuck is that, is that still a thing? Door-to-door salesmen in the year 2015? If, and it's a gated community. I should fucking call the cops. I should call the cops. I fucking hate that shit. Ringing my doorbell in a gated community trying to sell me something? <sighs> anyway, mm, Detroit was sick. Yumicon was super dope. Super dope. Can't keep out the fucking villagers around here. Sheesh. I don't even know what they were trying to sell me. I was like, are you serious? <sighs> Goosh. <laughs> there was three of them, too. Three people? the fuck out of here beat cheeks i should have been like that fucking guy in uh back to the future just come out of there with a gun you space bastard what is that guy's name i forgot anyway what's up everybody you guys down to play a little bit or what you gonna want to still fucking shoot the breeze i should just put that portion up on youtube just so you know i don't have to repeat it <laughs> everyone's gonna be like how was you it was awesome yumicon was awesome I loved it. I didn't like the anime part of it though. Uh, and I also didn't love the cosplay part of it either. I got a that part of it was weird. Thrashed. 3 years. Oh shit, Moochiken also for 3 years. Hot dogs out, Lord chat room. Let me tell you about the anime part of this uh convention. So Yumicon is an anime convention. Uh, everything I said thus far was about the game room within the anime convention. The anime part of it, definitely not my scene. First of all, I don't like anime, I just realized. And I knew this, but I was trying to be open-minded. And anime is weird, and I don't like it, right? I'm also starting to realize that though there are some interestingly clad people that are there, and it's like, okay, these people are interesting, they're dressed in an interesting way and you might want to talk to them or see what kind of a person they are and even though when you look at them it might be appealing like okay you know this is someone that they're dressed in a way it's like okay might be a cool person turns out to be a real fucking weird piece of shit you know basically what i'm saying is yumicon it was a great event for the game room and if you really like anime, that's cool too, but you gotta be careful who you talk to because that place is full of weirdos, maximum level weirdos. Like you guys think when I go to tournaments and I say, oh, I met like a chat room uh, a dweller and I say they're weird and I always say don't be weird. The, the weird levels at a regular fighting game tournament is a fucking pathetic joke, 13 and 0 matchup against the weird levels at Yumicon. At Yumicon, the weird levels are like, I didn't I wasn't even aware like if I had known I would have worn some kind of gear protective suit or something because these people are like pushing it they're pushing weird to the next level and there's so many more of them than there are normal people the normal people they cower in fear like if you were in an elevator with like 10 fucking of these weird nerds right and there was one other normie in there I was in an elevator it was just me and another normie right and then a bunch of nerds right the nerds were doing all this fucked up shit, right? They were like yelling and they were like, Yumicon, and they were like smelling like shit and everything. And I would like eyeball the normie, right? And we were like, oh man, these, yeah, Yumicon, oh, open this fucking door already, you know? There were so many of them, what are we gonna do? It's like fucking, it's like The Walking Dead or some shit. We have to pretend like we are weirdos so that the weirdos don't suspect that we're normies and then no, shit doesn't go down you know so anyway it was a, definitely a learning experience okay i really really enjoyed myself lots of fun uh both aspects the detroit aspect of it and the yumicon aspect of it were just awesome awesome even the bad parts were like uh learning experiences you know what i mean so yeah it was crazy Good times, good times. So I've been to Detroit now. I can, I can uh, cross that off my list. I'm sure I'll be back. Very enjoyable uh, part of the country, for sure. Another thing I really loved was that the hotel, I stayed in the GM 
building, like the General Motors building. The middle, it's like a castle. There's three towers, and the center tower is a Marriott hotel. And the two other towers are the other towers where they fucking do shit, like design Hummers or whatever. Uh, and it was really cool because the Marriott Hotel in the GM building, this is in Detroit, Motor City, United States, right? All the architecture had like automotive, like historic architecture. And like, the, it was really cool. The, the artwork and the paintings in all of the hallways in the hotels and stuff was all like automotive related. And I really liked that. Anyway, shh, shut the fuck up. You guys ready to play?